Hey guys, so in this video, uh, we're around that time of year for Halloween and everything, so I really just kind of want to share with you some of the stuff I did in my past, which believe it or not, I used to own a haunted trail and I did a lot of uh, work with prop design and scene design and things like that. And over the course of the years, I've sold a lot of the stuff, but I do still have a few things and I just want to kind of share with you guys um, what I do have still left and how maybe you can make it if you want to. So stick around. So this is something I made, I uh, called it a flaming shovel, and it was for a character in my graveyard scene, it was uh, the grave digger, but I wanted something kind of unique and everything, and I've never seen this till this day, and this, we're talking about 15 years ago. So I made this, and uh, literally my dad was the grave digger in the scene, so uh, he got a kick out of this. So what it did is a uh, flaming shovel. If you want to take a look at it here, this is actually some chicken wire wrapped around here and inside of this is a tiki torch wick and there's actually two of them so I took the chicken wire wrapped it around that tiki torch uh, wick and then I took a self tapping drill self tapping screw excuse me and drilled it through the shovel now the way that I had it set up is I actually had a lot of this uh, tiki torch fuel just kind of setting up to the side where you could dunk the shovel in do a quick light and then I had some sand over to the side so whenever it needed to be put out I just rub it into the sand so for our purposes right now I threw a little bit of that tiki torch stuff on so what our grave digger would do dip it light this up and suddenly you got really something unique now I wouldn't suggest using this indoors or anything but like I said I had a trail so anyway here you go Something very easy to make with a spade shovel, some tiki torch wicks, and that's it. I would always suggest make sure you're not around anything flammable. But that's why we have the sand. Put it out in the sand, and there you go. So really the next prop that I designed uh, is this jacket, which is kind of why I want to throw that in there. And uh, this is actually a pretty cool item. Uh, I had it on another character. But anyway, as you can see, it just looks like a basic jacket, but if uh, you know if you don't wear it properly, you kind of lose your head inside of it. So. All right, so this whole thing is based on an illusion that magicians have been doing for quite a while and this like I said I built this thing 15 years ago for my trail so what this is is a coat but it's been altered a little bit so and there we have something inside of it so let's take a look at what we've got it's a little body frame and take a look I built this myself I made this where this actually had another pair of pants where it had pockets here so you would not have to have your hands in your pockets to hold the framework and you could have your hands outside and this would be held Just simply like that so this is how this body frame works inside of the jacket basically put my hands in grab hold of this framework and I sit back and the framework holds up the jacket just like that like I said I had some pants to where didn't even have to do that as long as they were this was in the pockets you could go down and that framework would stay up 
and hold the jacket up high. So this is what the framework looks like. This is really just aluminum that I brought around. This is riveted in certain spots here and here, as well as this cross member. And then this is just felt going over top the whole thing. I had a, a person I knew how, that knew how to sew, was able to do this for me to cover that up so it wouldn't get cut or hurt or anything like that. But that's all that is for that framework. Now here's the jacket, same person, talk to them about it. They were able to drop the sleeve down further so it's not so high. So when your body drops down, you're going to need some room right there. So that allows you to drop down. So she was able to add that and kind of hide it. That's on both sides. The other part is the back side. So there is a part that is split right here and another piece added. Why is it like that? Because if we take a sideways view of the illusion, you're only sitting backwards. So you're here and you sit back and you stand back up. So if we put this jacket back on, your quick and dirty is like this, right? But if you're sideways, this is what it looks like. And that piece in the back allows you to kind of sit backwards and it doesn't pull that jacket. So. Anytime you're doing this illusion, you have to have your people, your public, directly in front of you. That's the main way it's going to sell it. So let's take a look at that one more time. Hey guys, so here's the uh, last prop we're going to need to put on this video, but this guy was hanging over top of my entranceway to Mahana Trail and uh, the first thing that went into was a barn. So this little guy here, I made him, as you can see, there's a little framework here and then I have him mounted to that framework. And he's a, a skeleton that I purchased and then I'll talk about some of this later. Um, and then the lantern I have here is just something I got off a cheap bin at Lowe's and just kind of mounted it all together. Now the big thing what I did with this guy is the way he looks. He looks kind of like he's old and rotted and everything like that. So what this is is spider web that you get around Halloween time where it's that stretchy stuff and I bought a bucket of liquid latex. Took pieces of that, dipped it in there, stretched it and really just kind of pulled it around and it gives it that webbing effect look. And when it dries, it's pretty darn solid. And I've had him for, like I said, I think around 15 years or so. Um, the hair, I cut off a wig and I put some spray glue on him and that's where his hair comes in. Now the look of him, where you get that brown and that white, I took a, a brown paint and painted him with that. After that, I did a dry pr brush technique with white paint and that gives it that little highlight. So you take a brush, dip it in white, you really dry it off, and then you just make light strokes over top and that gives uh, that foreground a little bit of lightness and it creates that background where it's darker and it makes it a little bit more realistic, especially when you're doing lighting techniques inside of these things. So that's one of the big things you gotta think about whenever you're designing any of this stuff. How's it gonna be lit and uh, if it's you don't want something that's totally black in a very dark area, so that's really going to kind of give you your direction as far as how you're going to paint these things. But uh, you can see here, this is just a little bit more of that spider webbing with a little bit less liquid latex. There's liquid latex on here. But, and then I didn't paint this because I wanted it to look more like spy, old spider web, old cobweb. Hey guys, that's it for the video. Hope you guys like, hope you guys subscribe, hope this kind of gives you uh, some fun ideas that you can play around with, especially during this time of season. So um, I will see you guys next time. Happy haunting.